So here we are at Bayview Farm and Garden, I'm dropping off my first wholesale order. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done some videos. So today, we're on Whidbey with our friend Jen and my husband Aaron and we're making a drop off at Bayview Farm and Garden because they are amazing. They're one of my favorite shops on Whidbey and they actually just placed a wholesale order through my shop, which is exciting. Um, now that they're actually going to be, they're going to be, um, hosting, hosting, selling some of my paintings and my stickers, which is super cool. Um, I've loved their shop ever since I went to it back in, I don't know, 2018, I think. Um, they've got such beautiful, like, home goods and so many garden ideas and plants and shrubs and trees and flowers and everything. Um, so we're making a pit stop here at, uh, at Langley and then we're going to drive through over to Bayview and check them out and drop off my little order, which was just super exciting. It's a super rainy, very typical Seattle fall day here on the island. We've seen lots of bunnies and more bunnies and lots more bunnies. <laughs> um, a lot of people doing a really great job of social distancing and some shops are open, some shops aren't quite yet just because of COVID and also because it's kind of early in the morning. People are on island time here and uh, they're like, oh, we're going to be open whenever we want to be open. But it's one of the one of the charms of the island life, I think. So this is a very flattering angle, by the way. <laughs> All right, uh, and then we're going to head on to Bayview. Yes. Okay. Uh, so here we are at Bayview Farm and Garden. I'm dropping off my first wholesale order of prints and stickers. I'm really excited. Ever since I came here the first time, I'm like, oh, everything is so beautiful here. My money just flies out the window. Uh, but I contacted one of the the owners, and um, she was interested in some of my paintings and stickers. So that was pretty exciting. So we're dropping off a little little order here today. So, give you guys a little tour around um, the farm and garden store and maybe a little bit of the interior stuff. So, yeah. Okay. This is what I should be doing. <laughs> putting, it on, putting it on mug. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 You're not a food eater. No, I'm not really a foodie at all. Yep. Bye. Bye. <laughs> 
Did you say pie? <laughs> there is a pie shop that's not far from here. Oh, yeah. Can you see your eyes? Yeah. <laughs> 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 forgot about that place. I would get larger living on this planet. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then I could also, like, bike everywhere. Yeah, you just like that. Get more Five. Hey, whoops, lens cap. Oh. <laughs> Such a cute little pie shop. <laughs> How's the pie? That's my favorite pie thing I've ever had. <laughs> right? Damn good pie. <laughs> You're quiet. It means it must be good. We're just I thinking want more. about where we're going to eat next. <laughs> <laughs> My pants still fit. Yeah. She just had like the it smeared all over your face. We just got to figure out where we're eating next. <laughs> How's that extra piece of pie? Uh, <laughs> snack time. <laughs> <laughs> So, in this video, I also wanted to give you guys a little bit of a shop update. Um, now that the holidays are over, which, <laughs> in hindsight, marketing Jennifer of 2020 should have done this maybe sooner so people could have shopped her site uh, for Christmas a little more, but when you're working full time in a pandemic and it's 2020 and you're working from home and you've got twin stepsons that are here every other week and things you just get done what you can get done in the time that you have but I wanted to tell you guys that I also I told my Instagram audience this like months ago but I also wanted to update you guys that my shop now has stickers like I was just talking about um that I dropped off at Bayview which that part of the video I actually recorded back in November and it's January 2021 now but you know Again, time gets away from you sometimes. Um, so, I wanted to give you guys uh, a little kind of up-close view of the stickers and stuff that you can find on my website. They were fun, so fun to do. I don't know if you guys can see this here. I'll... Nope, that's my eyeball. Let's try and get the bee. There we go. 
Um, so we got some fun bees and snails. They're so cute. Um, and I, I've never really been a sticker person and, um, put stickers on like notebooks or water bottles or laptops, but other people just love them. Um, so I wanted to give people a way to buy my art at like a, a lower price point because these I'm only selling for like a couple bucks a piece and it doesn't cost anything to ship them. Right, Freckles? This is also my latest studio helper. <laughs> she, um, I'll have to do another little video on her, but she came to us um, in the middle of last year and uh, we have brought her into the Dean Schlichting family. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to see her face right now. But she she was kind of abandoned um, near our house and she kept coming around and um, hanging out. I think she knows that we are cat lovers in this family. And she was just hanging out in our backyard and um, she would bring us mice. <laughs> other goodies as presents of a way of saying thank you for feeding me I think and for paying attention to me and and everything she's she's such a sweetheart I don't know why somebody would ever abandon her but she's so smart and has gotten along really well with our other kitties and is always quite the helpful helper around the house aren't you and in the studio you're really tired right now and you'd really like me to stop talking so you could take a nap huh I think so. But anyway, so we named her Freckles and uh, have taken her in and she's just adorable and so fluffy. Um, anyway, so stickers um, are available on the website now. I also spent some time last year making a whole bunch of like plant silhouette paintings um, because I really fell in love with this a particular green color that I came across which isn't made by Daniel Smith which is my entire other collection of paints uh, for watercolors but it's made by Mission called Gold Class Mission watercolors um, and the color is shadow green it's a really pretty color um, and so I actually made a whole bunch of prints that were plant um, themed and just because I'm, I'm still trying to figure out like my style and what I really love to paint I mean I know I love the act of painting itself but what kind of subjects um, you know landscapes portraits animals plants I'm still trying to figure that all out um, so I figure doing like a little mini series of, of things is a good way to figure out what I want to do as an artist um, and kind of figure out where I want to focus my time. I have the, uh, the plant pieces um, also up on the shop and they're in 8x10s and 11x14s. They're really calming color. I, I love that that green color. It's just it's kind of like in between a gray and a green um, and it really goes with a lot of different I think colors within like your home um, and it was really just something peaceful <laughs> to really focus on um, in the chaos of 20 of that was 2020 um, when I knew I could just like come into the studio and I knew what color palette I was going to be painting in. I knew the subject matter I wanted to to paint. And I think that's maybe one of the reasons artists do series is like, okay, you could paint all the things in the world with all of the colors and do all the things, but if you if you have all of the options, uh, it's really hard to focus down and be like, okay, well I could paint, I could paint plants, I could paint a person, I could paint landscapes and do you know, all these different things. But if you really just, if you, if you set up for yourself limitations, I guess. Um, so you know you're going to be painting with these colors and you know you're going to be painting these subjects 
and you you know you only have this amount of time to paint before you have to run the kids around or you have to go to work or before bed or whenever if you're not a full-time artist uh, I think it gives you parameters not limitations that's a great way to think about it parameters um, that you give yourself it helps me at least really focus um, and really get paintings done a lot more quicker than if I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to paint something, whatever comes to mind. Do, 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 do. Um, so <laughs> I think I pump these out in maybe a couple months over the, over the course of a couple months. The, once I started playing with that particular color, I was like, okay, I have to use this in some in some way, shape, or form in one of my next paintings. So I ended up doing a whole series around that color, and who knows, maybe it'll come back uh, again later in another piece. So I also have this on a totally other color spectrum, uh, this Atlas moth that my sister uh, commissioned me to do originally. Um, and she has the original, but now I have scanned in the original and have prints for you guys to purchase. Um, such a beautiful, beautifully colored creature. And it was such a fun project to work on. I think I'd like to do more moths and more like foresty, naturey things. So maybe like a Luna moth or something in the future. I think that would be really cool. I also remember when I was younger there was one summer night, if I remember right, at my grandparents' farm where I found an atlas moth that looked very similar to this and uh, its wings were a little tattered. It had seen some better days even though I think at the adult stage the atlas moth doesn't live, doesn't live very long, like even I think a week maybe and then it passes away, which is really sad because they're really gorgeous. But especially for a moth. <laughs> but anyway, I had it in my, I, it landed in my hand or I scooped it up. I think I was probably in like fifth or sixth grade. I can't really remember at this point, but I remember it feeling so heavy for a moth. Um, but its body is pretty, pretty large um, and heavy for as far as moths go. So when my sister asked me to paint this moth, I was actually really excited to have seen one in person. Um, when I still lived in Iowa, I thought that was a really, a really neat commission. I'm glad she encouraged me to do it. On the business side of things, if we're talking about that for a minute, uh, if people commission me and they say, oh, well, my budget is this, this range, um, I'll pay, I'll say, great, we can, we can definitely work with that. And ways that I, I keep it, the cost cheaper for, for clients sometimes is, um, I will give them the original, but then I will say, um, this is all in the contract beforehand, I'll say, okay, you can keep the original, but I'm also going to make prints to sell on my website to other people. And that's a way that I can keep commission costs down, is if I can make money over the long term doing prints with that, with that piece. Otherwise, I will charge more for them to have an exclusive license of that original piece and that I will never make uh, any prints of the original artwork. Um, side note. So the moth and the stickers and the plants for new shop stuff. Oh, and I, oh, oh, this is exciting on the video front. I also got, recently we, uh, we got a, a Costco membership within the last year, which if anybody has Costco membership, you know how dangerous they can be. Uh, they were selling, um, well, are selling, um, drones at Costco, which, who knew, uh, and they were having a really good sale on them, and I was doing a bunch of research because I've been wanting to expand my, um, kind of shots within my video, so not just have, like, close-up stuff and some regular landscape stuff, but to also do some cool drone work, but I'm not going to shell out, like, two thousand dollars for a drone that I might like lose in the water or in the trees or something and I'm sure you can get insurance on that stuff but it just seems like a whole a whole thing that I don't need to deal with right now there is this 
super tiny one that I watched a uh, Casey Neistat video on, of course, um, and he did a review on this DJ, DJI Mavic Mini, and it is so tiny, um, and it fits, like, in the palm of your hand. Isn't that so crazy? It's so tiny, um, but everything, like, folds out and folds back in, it's all collapsible and, like, super lightweight, and this is the one drone that you don't have to get, like, an FAA license for, which is, like, a big deal out here, especially in Washington State. Um, the, the weight and the size of this drone um, makes it so you don't have to get a bunch of licenses and clear everything because it's so small. And the flight, um, uh, I think you can, it can go for, like, two miles-ish before you have to, like, call it back and um, so the battery life isn't... I think the battery life is like 30 minutes or so, so it's not going to be doing like hours and hours of video, but I thought it'd be great to get you guys some more shots of the cool um, Seattle area. It's just such a beautiful place to, where there's mountains and water and forest everywhere. I thought it'd be great to have when we go start get through this pandemic and we can start going out into the nature and doing trips and stuff again. I thought it'd be cool to get you guys some drone shots um, going through the forest and the beach and stuff. So look out for that in the future. I just had to figure out how to fly it and not crash it <laughs> and to, into things. Need some wide open beach and space to practice on for sure. But anyway, um, if you made it this far in the video, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, and we'll see you around. Yeah, just kidding. Totally forgot about this other painting that I had uh, painted. <laughs> I've been wanting to do more landscapes um, of the Seattle area and surrounding areas. It's just, it's so beautiful. It's one of the reasons I moved out here in the first place. And when I was going through a bunch of my reference photos, uh, pictures that I've taken around the area, um, I came across this one that I had taken um, when Aaron and I were on a walk downtown Edmonds, I think maybe two years ago, and it was like at sunset, and we had just had this great dinner at one of our favorite local spots, and um, it was such a pretty night, and I took a bunch of pictures of the sunset, and so I ended up basing this painting off of, I don't know if you guys can see that, um, there we go, okay, off of the picture, um, and it's, it's called Brackets Landing is where we were walking along the shoreline and stuff and taking pictures, and there were several other people there too, this was pre-COVID, um, and I love how it turned out with all the pinks and yellows and oranges just kind of flowing together. I'm trying to get better at um, just relaxing when I'm painting and not trying to have everything look like the picture exactly. I want it to be more impressionist and more flowy, um, but still have enough detail where people can actually see. Oh yeah, I recognize that place. I've been there. Um, so I think there needs to be more paintings, paintings of the Seattle Pacific Northwest area. It's just such a gorgeous place um, to live. So that is also available on site by 8x10 and 11x14 um, sizes. So, okay, that's for real. All that's all. That's all she wrote, folks. Okay, bye.